Good morning everyone, how you doing? Paul here, yet again walking around for a cemetery. <laughs> it's a lovely day, we're in uh, February and today I'm back in um, Southampton again. And it's where I came recently to see Benny Hill's grave. If you haven't seen that video yet, go and have a look back. Um, uh, I love this place, it's just so chilled and so relaxed. But today, we're here for someone else. And first of all, please like and subscribe to the channel because obviously it, it helps grow it and uh, it gives me opportunities to make more of these videos in different locations. Um, but today, we're not here for anyone necessarily famous, but we are here to pay a bit of respects um, and we're after we're looking for the headstone of Mr. Frederick Fleet and it's somewhere <laughs> I will find it now Frederick Fleet he was born on the 15th of October 1887 up in Liverpool which um, is probably about 300 miles away from here up in the northwest of England um, and he passed away on the 10th of January 1965, age 77. Now you may be wondering what's so important about Mr. Fleet. Well, Mr. Fleet was on the Titanic, the RMS Titanic. And uh, he was assigned to the crow's nest. Now, if you don't know what the crow's nest is, crow's nest is somewhere where sailors would be up on lookout, basically, in case there was anything coming ahead. And Mr. Fleet was actually in the crow's nest on the night that the Titanic had its collision on the April, April the 14th, 1912. He sounded the alarm, iceberg ahead. It's a six officer, Mr. James Moody, and he was stationed on the bridge of the Titanic. And we also know that the rest, rest of the history from there. Now, Mr. Fleet, um, as well as being on the crow's nest in the watch out tower and alerting the staff to the iceberg ahead, he was also assigned rowing duties. So he, he got off the, off the ship and had to row people away. And um, it was when he was rowing away that he, he realized that they didn't have too many people on board because the officer that was with him was worried that if they go back close to the ship, that people would just start clambering on top of it and causing problems and will probably make the, the boat that they're on sink or run the risk of it sinking. Um, and Mr. Fleet dealt with this for all his life. He, he had issues with depression and um, he worked for many years on other ocean liners and on the sea, basically. But uh, he got married and him and his wife used to live with her brother and then sadly she passed away and his depression just got worse and worse and worse. His brother-in-law kicked him out of the house, didn't want him living there anymore. And uh, Mr. Fleet just couldn't take it. And sadly he, he hung himself um, in his brother-in-law's garden. On the 10th of January in 1965, and he was found there. But um, I think I think found the, the head. Now, I'm led to believe that Frederick was given a pauper's grave to start off with and that the Titanic Historical Society in America gave him this headstone. Poor guy. You know, he, um, what he must have gone through that evening, which led to that depression for those years and years afterwards. It must have been horrendous. But look, someone's put a little Lego Titanic down there. How cool is that? It's amazing. Frederick Fleet, 1887 to 1965. Lookout, RMS Titanic. Erected to his memory by the Titanic Historical Society, INC. Indian Orchard, Massachusetts, I'm assuming that is M-A-S-S, -S, USA.
Now I thought, because I couldn't find this headstone, this grave anywhere, as in there's no geographical maps of it. But if you come into Hollybrook Cemetery from the main entrance and drive along, and on the right hand side, look out for these two trees. Okay, you see those two trees? And then just along, you'll see Frederick Fleet's headstone. We can only imagine what people went through on that night in, in 1912 on the Titanic. You know, you think about it, the only lights that were around were from the ship and I, who knows how long they lasted for. And then you've got panic. This massive, massive ship sinking and everyone just clambering for their lives and it must have been horrendous. And for Mr. Fleet to have initially been given a pauper's grave, I think it's horrendous. And um, well done on the Titanic Society in America for giving him that headstone so that uh, any family members or anyone that knew him or knew of his family or people just in general can come and pay their respects to um, a guy that none of us can ever begin to imagine what, what he went through. Being at the crow, crow's nest and seeing that iceberg, what goes through your mind. And I also believe they didn't have binoculars issued in those days either. So it would have probably been a last minute thing that he saw it because of the light. You know, the only light you've got is if it's a clear sky, moonlit sky. And of course the, the lights on the ship, but it's too late then, isn't it? Anyway, please like and subscribe guys. Leave your comments down below. Um, let me know if there's any other places that you're aware of around the UK, around England to start off with. And um, yeah, it'd be good to go to them and to see, to you find. It doesn't always have to be someone famous. It can just be someone unique or someone with a story to tell or something a bit different. And then uh, I'll see if I can get there. In the meantime, take it easy. See you soon.